Sometimes random doesn't feel that random. It's not a great feeling when the roll of the dice doesn't seem to be hitting the numbers it's supposed to. Or worse, the randomness seems to be working against you. Welcome to every game of Settlers of Catan, where the dice don't play nice. It'll give you some comfort to know that you're not the only person that feels this way. In fact, this video was inspired by a Reddit thread talking about this very problem. And in the same thread, luckily, a lot of people had some really good solutions of how to deal with it, how to minimize the randomness or circumvent it altogether. And I've collected a few of them that I thought were either super useful or interesting. All of them are pretty unique enough that you'll have good selection to choose from, and I'm sure that after hearing them, you'll find one that works just right for you. And if not, I have my own picks at the very end of the video. Method 1. Event Cards. Let's start with an official attempt to deal with the randomness of Catan created by the producers of Catan. Here's the gist of it. You get a deck of cards uh, with 36 cards in them, and the 36 cards represent the total number of combinations of rolling two six-sided dice. And each card is basically an event card where once it's event card where once it's rolling a dice, you do whatever the card says. So it's uh, basically 36 unique ways to distribute resources to everyone. It feels a little overkill, and you'll see why in a second. Take a second to look at these cards I'm gonna, and pause to read. I think you get the general idea. There's a few more rules to it which you can read on their website, link in the description below. I should also mention there's a second official attempt to deal with the randomness called uh, Helpers of Catan, link in the description below. Method number two, pre-balanced Catan boards. Now we tend to blame the dice for the unfairness of the game, but sometimes it just comes down to the board state. Some boards are kingmakers and others are Fair-ish. And that's just what this website provides. A nicely laid out collection of starting boards for Catan, where it shows you the layout of the hexes and where to place the numbers. It's super easy to look at and set up, and will bring balance to your world of Catan. Link below. Method number three. Pity tokens. You ever get super excited when it's about to be your turn, and you know that the roll of the dice has to roll something in your favor, and you just have like a really great board set up, and there's no way that you're not going to hit something, and yet somehow you get literally zero resources. Not a great feeling. And as you share your woes with the other players about like how you should have got a resource, it's not fair, it doesn't make sense, and they take pity on you, that's why it's a pity token. But this time, the pity serves a function. Each time a player doesn't get any resources from anyone rolling a dice, that person is given a pity token. You can use coins or beads or whatever small trinket things you have lying around. They can then on their turn use those pity tokens to exchange them for any resource that they like. But here's how it gets balanced. The cost of the exchange depends on how many public victory points that player has. So if a player has 3 points, then it costs them 3 tokens to get a resource, but if a player has 9 points, then it costs them 9 tokens to get a resource. And to avoid anyone token hoarding, you can apply the same rules as rolling a 7 and someone having too many cards in their hand. So if you have more than 7 pity tokens, and a 7 is rolled, you have to return half of them to the bank, so it works out well that way too. Method number 4, the Ferris Dice. Now instead of averaging out the possibilities of two six-sided die where there's heavy weighting for those center numbers, you're kind of throwing that away and replacing those two six-sided die with one twelve-sided die. And that makes all numbers equally possible. Amazing, right? However, it also makes every spot on the board equally favorable and kind of takes away from that strategy part of the game. Just a note here, you would treat 1s and 7s as the robber and act accordingly. Method number 5. More dice. So if 2 dice won't treating you well, maybe 3 will. So how this works is you roll all 3 dice and then you get to pick which 2 dice you want to add up to be the final result. This is not bad because it gives you 3 numbers to choose from and you can kind of pick and choose what you think is useful to you. It's a little bit more math and board analysis, but I think it gives you a lot more control of the game, which is kind of nice. It also gets interesting because as you're picking which number results to choose, other people might chime in and say like, hey, if you pick the 4 results, then I'll trade you this and that. Method number 6, Crucible. Now this method is almost a mini game all on its own within the game of Catan. 
You can get a full description on this person's website, link in the description below, but here's the gist of it. You replace the 2 to 12 number spread with a 2 to 7 number spread and place those on the board based on the rules on the website. And then you take a pack of playing cards and separate it so that each player gets ace through seven to hold in their hand. You need two decks of cards if you have more than four players, which shouldn't be a problem because if you're watching this video, I would bet a like, comment, and subscribe that you probably have at least three decks of cards in your house. Anyway, so instead of rolling dice, what happens is that on your turn, you get to choose from the seven numbers that you have in your hand. And it's not random, you can just pick whatever number you want to lay down, and that's basically your dice roll. And those are the resources you uh, the board produces. But once you place that card down, it stays face up on the table until your hand resets. It resets by playing an ace, which is basically functions as the robber, but uh, you can look at the finer details in the website. But imagine being able to negotiate what cards you play. It opens up a whole new level and layer of the trading phase of the game. So then you can say things like, I'll play my five if you give me some of the resources you get from me playing this number. It definitely has a lot more to think about and might slow down the game more than expected, but so cool. Method number seven, real talk. Now this is where you either start clicking out of the video or spamming the dislike button because I'm about to get real with you. Settlers of Catan is perfectly fine as it is. Yes, there is a lot of randomness in the game that's kind of off-putting for a lot of players, but there's also a lot of things you can do in the game to offset that randomness. There's so many strategies and unique paths to victory, and on top of that, there is the creative and cunning of trading, and on top of that, it is a perfect knowledge game, which means that if you really wanted to, you could keep track of who has what cards at all times. These factors have been proven to outperform the randomness of the game as proven by the results of major Settlers of Catan tournaments. You will often find the same people doing well in these grand tournaments, which says a lot because it takes a lot to get there. First, you have to win your local qualifier, which is already a, you know, a handful of games. And then you move on to your countrywide qualifier, which is another big set of games. And then you get into the Europe-wide super tournaments, which again, you have to play a bunch of games. And the people in this list got to those Europe-wide super tournaments at least twice, and some of them even three times. These are the names pulled from the 2009 to the 2019 Settlers of Catan Europe super tournaments. Which is just a really long way of saying that sometimes randomness can be dealt with with skill. Also, since you watched this far in the video, I'm going to assume that this game is actually kind of important to you. And I feel like part of the charm of the game and what keeps you coming back for more is that randomness. That feeling of excitement of almost winning, but not having the absolute certainty of doing so. If method number 7 resonated with you and you want to try and get better at this game, I can make another video with a list just like this, but with different things to focus on to get better. Oh, and if you have any ideas to deal with the randomness in Catan, we would love to hear it. Please put it in the comments. And uh, that's about it for me. I'm just going to roll some dice until I get a 7 and turn off this video.